Hi everybody, I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Joining me now is Colonel Tom Sullivan, candidate for New York State Assembly. Colonel, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Of course, I want to talk about the migrant crisis here in New York. Migrants at Floyd Bennett Field in Brooklyn were relocated to James Madison High School on Tuesday night due to severe weather. So that meant on Wednesday, students at that high school had to transition to remote learning. Now, your response really made the rounds on social media, so I would love to get your reaction. When you heard about this situation, what did you make of it? Uh, very frustrated. Uh, I, I've been... I say this, I present it like this. This problem was both predictable and preventable. And we have neither right now with the prevention side. And we started really getting activated probably late April, early May and getting out to Floyd Bennett Field. And our first approach was really a common sense approach that, um, this facility, uh, Floyd Bennett Field, this location, is not suitable for anybody to be living at any duration at any time. It's in a flood zone area. Uh, it's an old airport. Uh, it does not drain well from just a, a regular rainfall. It's it's exposed to the elements such as the wind on the on the west side of Kennedy Airport, uh, and and that's the predictable part. The frustrating piece is that this is this is a national park right this is governed by the national park service they're very strict on handing out licenses for fishing and kayaking and it's used as a recreational area for athletic high schools uh grammar schools for football soccer uh hockey etc and just it just goes to show that they have no other solutions. There is no good solution for this situation. And it doesn't matter. Uh, I've always been concerned with this issue when it's been happening in Texas, Arizona, New Mexico. And, and people in the neighborhood, just common sense people sometimes would say, why are you so passionate? Why do you seem to get so frustrated? Uh, because one day it will be in our backyard and I do not wanna be that person to say, well, now I'm gonna get involved. I've been trying to get involved, you know, thus running for office for uh, a couple of years now. And uh, yeah, it, it's just not a good situation here in, in South Brooklyn, uh, Northern uh, South Queens. I did talk to a council member yesterday and she said it starts at the border and I want to get to that component later. But before I do, I want to talk about the predictable part that you said that Floyd Bennett Field simply isn't sustainable. You knew this in the spring. I talked to a Democrat assembly member in August and she said Floyd Bennett Field is a flood zone. If it rains just a little bit, you're stepping in it and there's there's a decent amount of water. So if it's not safe, if they had to move migrants from it because it simply was not safe due to winds, due to severe inclement weather. What is the immediate solution here? Because right now, Floyd Bennett Field doesn't seem like a sustainable, you know, a solution. Right. And it's only getting worse. There are more coming in uh, every day. And I hear and estimates. This, this is crazy. In, in my professional business, in financial business, or in the military when I was still in there, uh, I could never give an estimate from 400 to 1,000 a day, right? That, that just would not fly. Um, so that shows that they have no idea how many or who are coming into our neighborhoods. And this goes back a year and a half ago when Mayor Eric Adams decided to pick a fight with the governor of Texas and invite people to New York. Now, when a elected official with the authority of the mayor of New York City goes on national TV and decides to have that that fight with the governor of of, uh, of Texas, you just set policy and that's going across the world. And that's why you see this influx of migrants just building and building day by day, week by week. You know, it irks me and I learned this a long time ago and it frustrates me to hear the vice president of the United States who has delegated the authority, not the responsibility, 
The responsibility always lies with the President of the United States, Joe Biden, on the border. So she goes out and she's talking about what, what, what's the catchphrase she used? The root causes. Okay. I learned in high school, developed it in college, certainly learned it in the military. The root causes drought, famine, war, poor economic situations, political persecution. Okay. There's your root causes. But I'm going to submit one more to academia here, and that's policy. So when the president of the United States or the mayor of New York City declares himself a sanctuary city, you just set a new informal, not voted on, not doesn't go through the assembly of the legislator. You just set a new policy. Let's talk about Mayor Eric Adams for just a moment because he really put out an eye-popping number over the summer and he said that the influx of migrants into the Big Apple could cause the city $12 billion. That's a huge number. So what do you think is missing from this conversation when it comes to New York specifically and the immigration crisis that this country's seeing? You're just incentivizing the problem. Money is not the problem, right? It will become a problem. We've already, the fire department, the police department, sanitation, many of our civil workers have already been informed, right? That they will not be getting overtime. What does that translate into? That's a cut in services for the people in New York. You're jeopardizing our public safety because of lack of funds. And then you're gonna ask the federal government for more money. All you're doing is putting fuel on the fire. You have to cut the source of funding to this problem to start with. You have to change policy, and it's going to be very hard for him now to reverse his words to the world. They've already heard him. Come to New York. This, this sanctuary city, sanctuary state is irresponsible on so many levels. You invited this problem to New York City. What to, do you think? America. The- to your point, what do you think the limiting principles, if any, should be for sanctuary cities, sanctuary states? Do you think that New York should revoke its sanctuary status? It, it, it's, it's, you know, the, so the Democrats would tell you, well, there is no law that states were a sanctuary city. Yeah, but when you're, a, when you're a, a, an authority figure like the mayor of, or the governor of New York and you state something, you know, the the average and even above average person believes that to be true. That's why I say you just set a new policy. And that that's what it translates to the rest of the world to that New York is a sanctuary city state. You are violate, violating federal law. The law already exists. This is illegal. It's completely illegal. Using federal land was illegal, but there you go. Why? Because they have nowhere else to put the illegal immigrants. What do you think? What do you think the solution is for this current issue right now? Because right now it's not an ideal situation for anyone. The kids at um, James Madison High School are back in school off of remote learning. Parents certainly weren't pleased about that this week. Not ideal for them. It's also not ideal for migrants going there in the middle of the night. They didn't have cots. Also staying at Floyd Bennett Field. You're saying it's unsafe. Many people in New York saying it's unsafe. So what is this immediate solution? So, you know, that's, that's a great question to this, this dynamic problem. And that's, again, going back to what I said about predictable. We don't have the housing. We don't have jobs. Uh, we're not set up for emergency situations like this. So y- you created this problem. You made it worse by, by inviting this. So the solution is, is to shut the border Im- immediately, a year ago, two years ago. And, and do your job as the federal government, stem the flow. And then listen, I, I'm a compassionate person. The majority of Americans are sympathetic to this problem and the plights that many face through all over the world. That's what makes us so wonderful and so want, desirable to come to because they know people have these freedoms. And, and if you're gonna make it anywhere, you're gonna make it in America, right? But there is a process and the process is in place for a reason so that we can manage it. I'm, I'm, you know, the immigration system, 
uh, coming into the country is a whole other discussion on whether it's broken or not, right? But they are violating our laws. They have a total disregard. They are just coming and they don't seem to care. It's not their problem once they cross that border. It becomes our problem. And, you know, again, people are setting up food pantries, uh, clothing drives, right? And I'm, I'm all for it because once they're here, it does become a, a problem, a human problem. Uh, and, and yeah, what are you going to do? Leave them in the tents and, and risk loss of life? No, you're going to get school buses for the next eight hours and uh, move 1,700, 1,900. No accountability. They have no idea. And now they're going to uh, put them in a high school. So what's going to happen with that, right? So now you go to Zoom and the kids don't go to sc school because we all know what Zoom does uh, when you get you know 200 people on a Zoom call. Nobody's paying attention. Um, but then you leave and now you have concerned parents and you have, you know, what, what did the sanitation, the janitors come into the custodian engineers, right? The custodial engineers. They're not, they normally deal with, with X. Now you come in the next day and you're dealing with X times 10. Now you got to hire contractors to come in and clean up and desanitize because you have everybody in a panic. Colonel, That's it chaos. sounds like, it sounds like what you're saying, the problem ha is starting on the southern border. That's what another council member said yesterday to me in a conversation here. So what is your message to the federal government then? Because I've talked to uh, both Democratic and Republican Congress members, and they've all said there is a crisis at the southern border. Everyone has used those words. Now, the, the solution to get uh, the way to get to the solution obviously changes depending on party. But when you think of securing the border, what does that look like to you? Uh, you know, great question. And, and this is this is a semester worth of stuff coming at you here in a second. So do, do physical barriers work the wall? Of course they do, because you, you get to direct people in a certain, whether it's a river, a natural one, or a manufactured one, like a wall, or putting concertina or razor wire on. Those are the basics, right? Now you get into the, the, the diplomacy part. We give hundreds of millions of dollars to Mexico. For what? to have this. So now you have to put, say, you know, you're, we're, we're going to cut off funding for you, right? So the in, economic incentives, U.S. taxpayer money going to Mexico, get, we'll cut it off. And then you get the criminal element. You need the DEA, you need the border control uh, agents um, down there, do, allowing the, allow them to do their jobs. They are handcuffed right now from anything I've read, heard, or seen, uh, they're not able to do their jobs. And now with a situation like this, I would be fully on board with utilizing the National Guard to get this under control. So whether it's physical barriers, uh, law enforcement agencies, um, uh, diplomacy, uh, economic constraints, you know, no more money. What, what are we paying you for? You know, I, I, I have, like I said, this is a semester's worth of stuff here. Um, she goes down, you know, she being the vice president of the United States, again, given the, uh, the authority to go down there and stop this. Um, I, I, I am, I'm besides myself with the Mexican government right now because they're facilitating this. They know they're not staying. They're saying it's not our problem. I mean, if I went to Mexico for a week on vacation, I have to get off the plane, get in line with immigration, look at somebody in the eye and tell them, I'll be back here in a week, otherwise you'll be looking for me. And if I overstay my tourist visa or my the time I'm staying there, I don't want to end up, end up in a Mexican prison. You know, that's what Let they do down there. But, but we just, it just, they facilitate it. And then everybody knows, and again, the predictable part, the drugs, the human sex trafficking, the organized crime. It's a horrible condition we're creating for these people. This is America to them when they arrive here and they're gonna be working as, as some sort of uh, sex worker. 
That's the American dream. Let's bring it back to New York for a moment. Let's you're a candidate for New York State Assembly. Let's say you win. What are you doing to fix the problem at home? Fix it right here in New York. I will not fund this, this insanity. I will not incentivize it with more benefits until uh, the other elected officials do their jobs and we get some sort of unity. And, and that's going to be hard unless there's a drastic, drastic change. Uh, the Democrats have a super majority in, the, in the, both the Assembly and the Senate, and, they, and the governor is a Democrat, and yet they blame Republicans. That, that's, you know, getting into politics now, right? What, what do you want me to do? You're the ones with all the legal authority, the official power, the resources, and, and, and you're looking to blame who? So we need drastic change in Albany, break the supermajorities at a minimum come this November so that we have a say in this matter and they realize that they can no longer support this narrative because the... Uh, because the people of New York State will hold them accountable come November. That's what we need to do. Now, elected again, uh, I would not fund this. I would not support any policy towards this. I would, I would empower our law enforcement agencies to go out there and do their job and uh, not put them or their families or their pensions at risk for doing their jobs. That's another little little issue here that, that people fail to forget. When, when New York City took away the qualified immunity for the, for the uh, New York City Police Department, they're afraid to do their jobs. What, so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go to jail in, in, for doing you know, my responsibilities? So you know, it's, uh, that's what I would do, enforce the laws that are already on the books Everybody wants to go to Albany. Oh, I passed a new bill. I want to pass a new law. How about we start enforcing the laws we have in place first? Let's look at the next week. And I think there's an issue on the horizon that supersedes politics. It's clearly a humanitarian issue. And that's if, if you look at the um, if you look at the forecast, there's inclement weather, there's heavy rain and winds over the next yeah. few days. Migrants are still at Floyd Bennett Field. So what is the solution here? short term because we said or it was said earlier this week that floyd bennett field's not safe same conditions next week well look, look at the message so so send it uh taking them in in the in the later part of the evening in a downpour with heavy winds 35 to 40 mile per hour winds and transporting to them to another unfamiliar location um and uprooting other people that's and, and then waking them up at 430 in the morning to take them back. That that's humanitarian. That that's an inhumane. That's not a good solution. Again, back to my point earlier. There is no good solution for this. New York City, New York State has lost the capability, does not have the resources to handle uh, illegal immigrants of this magnitude. It's plain and simple. So, you know, they didn't want them in the schools. They didn't want them in, in the gyms. Uh, the hotels are booked and they're not getting paid. I just found that out yesterday. They're not getting paid some of these hotels. How long before they last? And, and what's the bill going to look like when they do, uh, if they ever do, leave these hotels? What's the bill going to be for mattresses and carpets and broken utilities? I, I, that's that just times it by five of what the normal bill is. So what's the solution? Um, you have to shut the border first, stem it off and start deporting. OK, nobody wants to talk about that, but that's the plain truth. Start deporting, but start with the easy ones, the ones who have gone out and committed crimes and violated their their um, their status as uh, you know immigrants coming in seeking uh, sanctuary, right? So start with them, and the message will get back that I went to the United States. I put me, my family at risk, uh, paid a, a significant amount of my money, perhaps the last dollar I had, and and only to result in a deportation. It doesn't work. That message will will get back, and and we'll we'll see less of it coming to the United States. 
So in the meantime, I, Colonel, in the meantime, then, what's your message to New York City's Mayor Eric Adams then? Yeah, so um, he needs to be banging on the door of the White House. Uh, and he, I, I will give him credit. He's been saying a lot over the last three months, and it's going to take a lot more for reality to set in with the White House because I, I don't know what's going on there. It doesn't seem to be working. The governor needs to support the mayor in this narrative and uh, stop asking for money. That's the other thing. The only money that should be spent right now is for buses and and planes uh, returning people back to their countries of origin. Colonel Tom Sullivan, I really appreciate the conversation. You're welcome back anytime. Well, thank you very much. Pleasure to, to be on today, and uh, I welcome the opportunity to come back and talk about a lot of matters.